Shabbat Shalom. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because he's worthy to be praised for everything. Um, today we're going to look at a order um, primarily of the woman that's going to cover men also. Because the most high mainly dealing with men. We're going to see that. That we're going to deal with some order and see why a lot of the things that you see now is happening. And we're going back pretty much into the beginning of how it was and how things got messed up from the beginning in the garden. So this, that's where it all starts. And we're going to see that, uh, get some understanding here, and how we shouldn't be to make sure that we don't continue to repeat the same, the same thing over and over again which has been done up until now but it's a new thing you know it's not something of old you know as far as I say um, how this world started to create what they call women's lib and so forth and how a woman should be and how women are now and how some of them not going to make it to the kingdom behind following the way this world would have you to follow and not being in order. So let's look at uh, Genesis, the third chapter. And it reads, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field. I mean, he was slick and sneaky and sleekly and all that. Which the most high power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have the most high said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So he's asking her a question. Had the most high told you? Woman, this is Adam's woman. So the serpent talking to another man's woman. Now, she being Adam's woman, should not even be talking to him. But he asked a question. Yeah, have the most I said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So understand, this is the first lie ever been told on this earth, right here. Ye shall not surely die. Now she knew the law. She knew what the Most High said. Because she said. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, ye shall not eat of it. So she's letting you know the most I done told her that but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. You're not going to die. So, she knew this. First and foremost, she should have been talking to him in the first place. She should have said, go ask my husband. Hmm. But, she chose to talk to him.
And this tree was the knowledge of good and evil. So the tree that they were able to eat of was the tree of life and they could have lived forever. But she chose to eat of the tree which the most I said we wasn't supposed to eat of. Just the woman that the most had created for Adam, Eve. He named her Eve. We read Ecclesiastes 25 and 24. It says, of the woman, Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha 25 and 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. See? We die from this action that Adam's woman, Eve, It's getting ready to do. Now, the most I said, and she just said, the most I said, the day that you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Just like we bring forth certain things in the spirit to enlighten our people. What works. So that your name can be written in the book of life. Or else you're going to be cast in the lake of fire, period. So this is where it all started. So, you see how She's going against being with her husband. Listen to another man. Tell her the first lie that we is recording the Bible. That's wrong. Look at Exodus 22. Exodus 22 and 28. So we'll get some understanding here today. And, and if you're offended by this, you got to take it up with the Most High. May the Most High correct you and lead you and guide you in the right way that you can understand what it is that you need to know in these last days. Because this is the last time. It could be the last time that this really is being brought out. Exodus 22 and 28. It says, thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. See, a lot of you look at that and say, gods, who is that talking about? Thou shalt not revile the gods. But it's talking about men. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. And we're going to see more and more. Let's go to Psalms. 82 and 6. Psalm 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High, right? All of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men. See? I have said, ye are gods, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So these gods are talking about men, not women. So you said men and women. You can say that. You think the most I came, couldn't have put that there? But it says, but ye shall die like men. I have said ye are gods, verse 7, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Hold on to Genesis, the third chapter. We're going to be going through that a lot because 
It's a lot of meat there. So, Genesis 3 and 5. Genesis 3 and 5. For the most high, this is certain serpent. I hear told her that lie. For the most high does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right? So say, hey, the day that you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then your eyes gonna be open, and you're gonna know good and evil. Whereas all we need to know was good. The most high and how to follow what he wants to do, his rules and regulations, his law, statutes, commandments. That's all we need to know. That's it. That's all they need to know. That's all we need to know. But no, we want to eat of the tree of good and evil. Most high is good and his commandments are good. We know that. Point blank. So, say, hey, you're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. So that's power that he's presenting to her. The woman, not the man, the woman. Man has nothing to do with this. It's all about the woman. You're going to be as gods. You're going to be as the men. You're going to be as the Most High, Mashiach, and the men. The men. Look at John, the 10th chapter. St. John, the 10th chapter. And we're going to see what it is that's been said is going to be proven according to the scriptures. St. John 10 and 34. Well, wait, no, let me see what I want to go there. No, I'm going to go up before that so I'll show you that is who it's talking to. Um... Look at, say, John 10 and 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. When he said, I am my father, I want. So he's talking about the men. My Savior said, answer them. Many good works have I shown you from, your, from my father. But which of those works do ye stone me? So he's talking to men. The Jews. The Israelites. Men. The Jews, who are the men, answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God of the Most High. Right? But it says God here. We'll, just, we'll deal with that so it'll get edification for when we read verse 34. Amashah Arshah answered them, Is it not written in your law? We just read it in Psalms 82 and 6. Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. So who is he talking to? He's talking to men. Not women, but men. What did he say? Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. And if he called them gods... Unto whom the word of the Most High came, and the scripture cannot be broken. See? Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of the Most High. I am the Son of the Most High? That's what he's talking about. So, we mainly hear because it's telling you he's talking to men. When he said in verse 34, Mashiach said, answer them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. And we read it in Exodus 22 and 28. And Psalms 82 and 6. So let's go back to Genesis 3 and 5. For the most I does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, the most I told us, 
he said in, uh, well, for us to know now, Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse, Genesis 1, 26. And the Most High said, let us make man in our image. Man in our image. Not woman, but man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Like make man in his image. Right? So look at uh Colossians 3 and 10. Colossians 3 and 10. So that's the most high. And a Mashiach Yavashai, as an angel, the son of the Most High, the only angel that's the son of the Most High, when you read Hebrews 1 and 5, in Ephesians, so you know, he proved that because he said, let us go down to make man in our image. So let's prove that's a Mashiach Yavashai. Real quick, Ephesians 3 and 9. Ephesians 3 and 9. Because it says, let us go down and make man in our image. So Ephesians 3 and 9 says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That means something that's unknown, a secret, which from the beginning of the world, from Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, have been hid in the Most High, who created all things by a Mashiach Yahushai. So the Most High created everything by a Mashiach Yahushai, so he's there. When it says, let us, that's the Most High and his only begotten Son, a Mashiach Yahushai, making man in, the, in their image. That's why he said in John, 10 and 30, I and my father are one. They agree. So we're looking at uh, Colossians 3 and 10. And it says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. The way you think. After the image of him that created him. See? That's when he said his image means the mindset of the most high. First and foremost, Romans 12 and 2, Romans 12 and 2, so you have to become a new man, even today, Master Yahweh Shai said, being born again, it changes your mind, the way you think, you know, because you got to learn it, you got to live it, you got to apply it in your life, the application of how you apply this truth in your life is what's going to work. But if you are following the way of this world that's set up to send you straight to hell, then that's where you're going. you got a choice to life or death. That's it. And the way this world is now is not the way the Most High set it up to be. We're going to see. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. Isn't that something? This scripture coming to tell us, be not conformed to this world. Are you conformed to this world? Or are you, as you should be in order, as the Most High would have us be in order, as he set up the order? Or are you trying to be more than what you should be in living your life out of order? As we said, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, the way you think. You got to renew your mind. You can't keep, look, you got you to gotta examine yourself. And really look at, are you acting like the daughters of Zion, like your foremother, Sarah? How would she be? Or how would it be if everybody was like you? Everybody going to be just like you. So how would this world be? How would it be? 
Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Now, you just tell you what's good. Go back to Romans 7 and 12. First and foremost, the Most High is good. Nobody good but the Most High. My second shy said it. What else is good? Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. What do you say? Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't allow the world to send you to hell with it. Don't conform to the world. Oh, I got to, the world make you feel good. The world make you feel good enough to, enough to have your butt burned up in hell. Where the worms never die and the fires never quench. Well, that's a change. You got to change. He said, and be not conformed to this world, Romans 12 and 2, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind the way you think. Like you got to research our ancestors. You got to research to see how they work. Would they be acting the way you acted? Would they conduct themselves the way you conduct yourself? Would they feel the way you feel? You can walk in Sarai's shoes. Say this is her. The spirit of Sarai is in you as a daughter of Zion. Renewing of your mind. You can't be as this world would have you. I can't say it enough. This world is arrogant, prideful, conceited. Put you on a plane of exaltation. So you can go to hell with it. Go to hell any way you want to. Just don't try and take those that are trying to make it to the kingdom with you. That's the whole gamut of what you see here. In the woman. She's going to be as gods. She want that power. That's power. That's why your mind got to be renewed. Be renewed. Most I want like, humility and a broken and contrite spirit. But women now is like real prideful. Because of women's lip. You go back before that. You start going back from that before that. Going all the way back to the beginning of time. We're in the beginning of time right now. In Genesis. And we can go to the end of time. And see that. Same thing in the beginning. He had enough time from the beginning. All the way to now. To see where it is now. And all those that have spiritual understanding. To see how. The mindset is. Of most. That's been. Conformed to this world. Even though they call themselves Israelite, don't matter. You have to be reformed. You got to be conditioned to know how to be that your name can be written in the book of life. That's what this is all about. No more, no less. To make you better. But see, somebody can't take correction because of pride. And pride is down before, between, before the man but men and the most high. That's what it says. I mean, you can't be renewed if you got pride. You're not going to be renewed. Everybody dissected this, dissected that. You got a job to do. Everybody have a job to do. Do your job. Do the job that the most high say you're supposed to be doing. And listen to these scriptures and change. That's what I say, change. Look at pride. Go to Ecclesiasticus 10 and 12. The beginning of pride, Ecclesiasticus 10 and 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High and his heart, which is your mind, is turned away from his maker. You want to follow your own way. That's why Ecclesiasticus 3 and 24 says, For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion overthrowing their judgment. Like a lot of you going to be evil toward me. But I ain't write this. I ain't write the Bible. 
But I have no respect to persons. Most I have respect to Israel. We as a nation. Not individually. We have no respect to person. And this is no uh, rant on women. This is about making you better. To get you in order. If it's possible. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Filthy wicked acts. Sins. And therefore the Most High brought upon them strange calamities. And overthrew them suddenly. Utterly. See. Verse 7. Pride is hateful before the Most High and man. And by both does one commit iniquity. See. So. We ought to understand, you know, I had a whole breakdown on pride. But going back to Romans 12 and 2, it said, and be not conformed to this world. You cannot tell me that the world is not prideful. Because when you look at the enemies and the haters of the Most High, the first word of the name is Esau, the Edomites. And they're the ones that's ruling the world. They're the ones that give you your attitude because you've been Edomized if you acting in a way of being prideful. Most I want humility and a broken and contrite spirit. Who has that? That's when you're going to start going to being a virtuous woman. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to do a self-examination. Just type of self-examination on YouTube. I got a, a few lessons that I've done on self-examination. To renew your mind. That you may prove what is that good. And acceptable. And perfect will of the most high. And we just seen that the good. Is the keeping of the most high's laws. To do what he say do. That's my shot of shy. Was perfect. In doing. And fulfilling the laws of the most high. See. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, or Bahashem Mashiach, you rolling in the name of the anointed Savior, Bahashem Mashiach, he is a new creature. This is being born again. All things are passed away. So if you're still the same way you have been in your attitude and what you're dealing with as you were in the world, I don't give a dang if you was an L7 or whatever. You still the same? Which is a square if you don't know what that means. Uh, you squares don't know what I'm saying, but if you squares understand, I say L7, and you take an L and you put a 7 on top of it, that creates a square. You know, if you a square, <laughs> you still the same way as you have been growing up in the world. There's no change in you. There's something wrong. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, which is by Shema Mashiach, I'm shy, you roll in the name of the Lord and Savior. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So when people want you to be the same, you can't be the same. Or you're not rolling by Shema Mashiach, I'm shy. You're not a new creature. You're the same creature. If somebody meets you and say, oh, wow, you're the same as you was when you was young. There's something wrong. And you call yourself in the truth? Into the truth? You got to be constantly changing for the better. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, Bahashem Mashiach is, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You see that? All things are become new. You got to become new. You cannot be the same person you always have been. None of us. Go to Psalms 82. In one, this is all about change. Being born again, not coming out of your mama's womb again, or from your your father's loins to your mama's womb again. No, this is about renewing your mind the way you think. Like I said, you got to learn it, you got to live it, and you got to apply this in your life. And we got to do a self examination of ourselves. 
So you're not caught up in being cast into a lake of fire. Look, Psalms 82 and 1. The most high standard in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. He judges among the gods. The men of Israel. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Salah. You say, hey, how long are you going to judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Verse 6. I have said ye are gods. Men are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men See, these gods are men. But you, you tell the woman, oh, you're going to be as gods. You're going to be just like the men. Having that power like a man. Isn't that what we see now? Women running around here just like they're a man. Trying to have the same power as a man. But when they go down, when all this go down, and you know what this Bible is saying, was prophesied about what he's going to do to women, and what's going to happen to women, that don't rely on the most high's word and following how he would have them to be, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible. And Satan know he got a short time to cut down with much wrath? Hmm. And he get in the mind of people to have them do what it is that you draw to to. to to yourself behind you thinking evil, speaking evil, and acting evil. Understand this. Most high is not evil. But you will to draw that evil to you in the way you think, which is contrary to the word of the Most High and how you should be in being a daughter of Zion. Hear the word of the Most High. Psalms 86, 82 and 6. And this is the word. It's not, you know, I'm not bashing at all. I'm just trying to enlighten women so that you can really understand how you got to be because how you go into the kingdom you got a wrong mindset in the kingdom you're going to change no we change it now we just heard we knew another mind change the way you think change the way you speak change the way you act your actions or you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire I don't care how holy you think you are or righteous you think you are we got to follow thus say the most high Period. Psalms 82 and 6. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. Get that? Like men. Like men. And fall like one of the princes. It's men he's, he's telling us, telling this to. But what was Eve told? Genesis 4 and 5. For the Most High does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See that? You will be just like the men. Knowing good and evil. You can have power. Because that's Allah, which is power. Or Allah Hayyam, the powers. And that's not right. Because the Most High made man. Then he made woman to be a helper for the man. But see, this, this, the, work, uh, the world is out of order. It's totally out of order. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And you know, a lot of women don't like Paul's writings because he's keeping it real. And you can see it started from the garden. That's why he had to come back and set order up. He said, But I would have you know 
This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Mashiach. And the head of the woman is the man. And we're going to see why he's saying this. Let's go back to the law. Going back to the beginning. Where we at? The head of the woman is the man. So it don't mean because you're not married, no man is not over you. You can't, you, can't, you can't be over a man as a woman. The head of the woman is the man. It didn't say her husband, it said the man. And the head of Mashiach is the most high. We talk about a wicked man. Talk about a righteous man. See? So, that's the order. Head of Mashiach is the most high. Head of man is the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, the anointed Savior. Head of the woman is the man. Okay? Look at Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Ecclesiastes 1, the first chapter, the ninth verse. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. So the thing that hath been of old is that which going to be in the future. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Whatever you're doing now is going to be done in the future. And there is no new thing under the sun. There's no new thing under the sun. Is there anything well it might be said? It may be said. See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. So how is it that you can follow women's lib and a woman being over men when that didn't exist of old. That's out of order. Totally out of order. But, we got to look at exa examples. Be able to show how, and like I said, this is for women, but this is for men too. A lot of you men, you out of order in how you deal with your woman too. You're supposed to teach her. And women, that are under men as leaders, you got to learn from them. Judge, go to Judges 16, chapter. Look at Samson. Give an example. Judges 16, chapter, first verse. And then we go, when we go back to the judgment of the woman and Adam, you're going to see. Either we was following the right way, we looked at the example what the Most High said and followed it. And that's what we have the choice now. We have too many examples in this Bible. It's a book of life to know how we're supposed to operate and not do the same thing they've done. Or you're going to get the same results. There's no excuse. If you don't know, you're supposed to ask so you would know. Or study to show yourself approved to the Most High by knowing the scenarios of what works and what don't work. So let's look at uh, Samson. Go to Judges, the 16th chapter. Let's start the first verse. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot, a prostitute, and went in unto her. That's sex with her. And it was told the Gadites, saying, the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying in the morning when it is day we shall kill him say hey they surround him saying in the morning we're going to kill Samson and Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and two pokes, you know, Samson was a mighty man, strong as ever. And went away with them. 
bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. It came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarach, whose name was Delilah. So now he loved this woman whose name is Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. So see what they're doing? Saying entice him and see where his great strength lieth. How do we have all this strength? Telling this woman Delilah to entice him. See, when you understand the truth, it's the most powerful entity in this world that we deal with in the flesh and then women. <laughs> so listen to what they say. They know this. They say to Tyson, them. Back them eyes at them. Flirt with them. Put on some smell goods and, and, and shake your rump to them. Entice them. And see where in his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. Money. We'll pay you good. But you gotta find out where his strength lieth. It's a traitor. But she's with her people. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, where is wherein is thy strength, thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green whiffs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be, in, be as another man. If they bind me with seven whiffs, See, then I'll get weak and I'll be like every other man. Then the masters of the Philistines brought up to her seven green whiffs, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. See, she's working for the enemy. But it's a purpose of the Most High, really. That's why the Most High ways and thoughts are not our ways and thoughts. Now, there were men lying in wait abiding with her in the chamber. The men waiting in the chamber, waiting for Samson's strength to be abated. And she said unto him, The Philistines be, come, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the wits as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, Thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Say, what is it going to take that you could be bound and your strength can be revealed? And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new cord, new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak. And be as another man. So you tie me up with new ropes. That's never been used. Then I'll be weak as other men. Delilah therefore took new ropes.